Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Um, how are you doing today? Great. How are you doing? Doing good. Um, we've had uh, some really good discussions here um, around uh, the last couple of days. We've been actually answering some questions that came up, which is what we love doing. And it's okay mm-hmm. that we, you know, push what we had planned off a little bit. Uh, but um, when you think about these two questions, I was kind of pondering, uh, in a sense, you know, what has got up to here with uh, one. The first question was, how do we respond to this awful world and the terrible things that happen mm-hmm. that we can observe now, particularly because of uh, both uh, think of the uh, flow of information is that you know, we can observe it because uh, it you know, shows up on the television news. Uh, we have computers that our news comes on. Uh, we have uh, Facebook, we have Twitter, we have all these different things where we can get information pretty quick. Right. Um, so we're aware of the things that happen. And by the way, the, the, the preponderance of, of news, in a sense, and it's because I think of the nature of man, it tends to focus on the awful and, and negative. Right. Uh, so that um, even, and this is kind of funny here in Colorado, um, and I've been, we've lived in Colorado since 1982, so 40 years. Okay. Um, and we, we, you know, we lived here and we had snowstorms. And we'd have a snowstorm. It'd be heavy. You know, we'd get a foot, two feet of snow. It, and the, basically it was snowstorms coming. Uh, you know, try to do as well as you can. And, you know, it'll, it'll be done and, and over. Um, right. Well, uh, today, and I think this is where the you know where the news has gone to, um, is that we'll have a six-inch storm, mm-hmm. and it'll be portrayed as the most awful thing that's ever going to happen. And you better stay home, and you can drive, right, and, and, right. and everything's going to break, and everything's terrible. Um, <laughs> it's like, gosh, I can remember when. That was nothing, you know. Um, right. And it wasn't highlighted as a terrible, awful thing. That and was just part of what came. It was just part of, of living, kind of like what we talked mm-hmm. about with people in 1920s Texas. You know, it was going to be hot, which it, they didn't right. have. They didn't have great forecasting then, other than, man, it seems hot. <laughs> right. But they didn't. They didn't get upset about it. They didn't like. Oh, this is the most awful thing ever in the world. It's like, oh. Well, this is the way you know life is, and so the news has accentuated the negative and the awful, and tends to blow it out of proportion. Now, there's right. things like like the children down in Texas. Uh, you can't blow that out of proportion. It's out of proportion. It's it is horrible. It's crazy, right. terrible, awful, gut wrenching, uh, mm-hmm. empathetic because you can picture you can picture your own child mm. in that situation. Oh my right. gosh, what would I do, feel, and understand if my kid was right. in that room? Uh, and that was me and those parents I'm sure are going through that right now so uh, it is awful but the question is uh, what about this evil world the question we had yesterday was um, how do we as a young couple Mm -hmm. you know make decisions and should we have basically a system you know and and decide how to structure things and right a hierarchy uh, yeah a hierarchy and the answer goes back to everything that we try to share and that is that well let's go seek God yeah. um, and receive truth. He says I'll guide you into all truth. I'll show you understanding. I'll give you an ability to pull these things together so that you don't wind up like mm-hmm. with the question of how, how awful is this? Do I conclude that in, in essence, I never can experience good, or it's not going to be very good, or God isn't that good, mm-hmm. uh, or how come? Uh, he said, well, pursue truth, and let me guide you to a place where it, it starts to come together for you. It's like, ah, 
okay, Mm -hmm. now I understand it. Now I see it. And I can live in the covenant given the place that I'm living in, which is a, a terrible world. And I don't blame God for it. I just understand that now that this happened, what do you want me to do and how do you want me to proceed? And, and remember, bad things are going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that was a surprise, or I didn't expect that, or how come that happened? Now what? You know, what do you, what do you want to do? You know, so Linda, Linda and I have a great story that we've shared. Uh, in, in 2008, we had a tornado attack our house. This yeah. is a, an amazing story, yes. Uh, and uh, we were, <laughs> we were, you know, it was a summer day. Uh, happened to be the, mm-hmm. the day of the uh, National Democratic Convention, what was in Denver, uh, the start of it. And a beautiful day. And we're down in our theater room watching TV with our kids and grandkids. And, hey, it's nice, so let's go outside. We go outside. And um, uh, we're standing outside, and we notice that there's a, a white funnel cloud mm. coming out of the sky. And in Tex- or in Colorado, generally speaking, we don't really have tornadoes because I was of- I say, that's not common in no, your area. No, because of right. the mountains, it, it, it'll, it'll go east of us, but generally not in Denver, particularly where we are, We've, we hadn't seen one. And so it's kind of like, and once in a while you see what we call these dust bunnies or mm-hmm. dust funnels that pick up a dust, and it's kind of a wind thing, and, and yeah, it's dusty, and it picks it up, and it, but it goes away. So it comes down, and we think, well, that's a, that's a wind deal. And then it's like, oh, it gets bigger, mm-hmm. gets darker, and we're standing outside, and it's like, uh-oh. I said, that's a tornado. Mm. And it's on the edge of our property. I said, everybody inside, uh, you know, go down. We have a room downstairs where... Uh, it's all closed up and there's no windows in it, so we get down there and close up because you know it could it could hit the house and so right. they they all go in and I st- <laughs> I stayed outside. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like no, you know, no, certainly not. You know, it can't be. And then, and so we're uh, it's it's coming up, getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's like, uh oh, I got to go inside too. So I go inside and I basically say to God. Uh, what do you have to say about this and what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. He said, this is actually an attack against you and your family and the ministry of the house because that's where he did retreats and I want you to stand against it. Uh, mm. And you go you go and pray against this because uh, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing that's happening. It's physical, but it's spiritual. Right. Okay. And by the way, I was studying the covenant. Um, so I mm. pray, I go out and pray the covenant. God, you said... You'll bless us. Uh, you'll protect us. All these features. Remember all those things we went through. Protection. All right. those things. I'm praying those verses. And uh, it comes up, comes up about 100 yards from the house and goes up into the sky. And it, uh, it goes from west to east, which is the direction of all weather in Colorado, west to east. Okay. So it comes, goes up in the sky. And I think in hallelujah, it's done. Ha- you know, It's over. It's going to go up. And, and you know, even if it goes over the house now... It's going to keep going, and we're good. So I go to I go to the front door, uh, which is glass, and I'm just going to see what happens. It comes back down, uh, mm. but I'm thinking that's okay because it's going to go. It's going away. It stops, um, and not only does it stop, but it starts coming back to the house. Which is crazy. That's not which a is, normal weather which, pattern. Yes. Uh, well, even the people that I've talked to, meteorologists said. They've never, ever, 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 ever experienced that, ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it came back. And so now I'm at the front door. Now it's so big, I can't even see the edges of it. Mm-hmm. And it's coming uh, right at our house. And I'm standing there praying, praying, praying. And then um, our grandchildren were worried about what happened to me. Right. So, um, hey, where's Opa? Uh, Opa and Oma German for Grandpa and Grandma. Um, I don't know. They don't know. And so Linda and Michelle, our daughter, say, we'll go find them. So they go upstairs, and, and I'm, I'm standing praying at the, at the door. And, right. they, and they come, and all they see is this massive tornado this big storm coming, coming right. to us. And then they, they just join. Mm-hmm. Uh, Father, you said, Father, you, you in the blood and in the name of Jesus Christ, under his blood, you said you protect us. And, uh, and so literally, um, and by the way, because of the Democratic National Convention, there were helicopters out. And mm-hmm. because of the tornado, 
they flew down immediately and t got all this on tape. So it's all on video, right? It's all on video. And uh, You had it posted on the website We did. We had while. it on the website. Yeah. Uh, and I think, actually, people can go to the website and look at it, uh, afjministry.com, and there's it's there. So um, three times it goes away and comes back. Three times goes away and comes back. Um, and we're praying and praying and praying. And then we thought, uh-oh, it's really coming. And ultimately, uh, it stops right in front of our house, gets sucked up. Um, and like a, like Linda says, a, a straw <laughs> straw sucked it up, and it's gone. Um, mm -hmm. And we were completely preserved, uh, no difficulty. Uh, it didn't even appear that anything was on the property at all. Uh, we were shocked that it didn't, uh, no damage, nothing like that. So, right. the, so the news um, sees it. And they had made a comment because our house had been covered with the dust and the tornado right. appeared it was over the house. They made a comment on air. I guess that in our house was the one there. They right, said, I, right. guess, I guess that house is gone. <laughs> uh, so they thought it was gone. They thought it was destroyed. By all logic, it should so have been. So they right. sent out a news crew mm -hmm. to discover the damage. And they find it, nothing's a problem. And Linda's, <laughs> Linda's there. I love Linda. So they interview <laughs> Linda, um, and Linda uh, is like, it's about a two-minute interview, and she, all she shares is miraculous, and the, under the blood of Jesus, and we played the blood of Jesus, and it came, and it went, and it was huge. Mm -hmm. And and she uh, didn't hold back in her interview. And it she went didn't, all across the news. <laughs> she didn't, and so we were, we were the lead story. Mm -hmm. Linda Case was the lead story of the 9 o'clock news. I love and they it. Sh they didn't edit a thing by by the next don't morning they'd edit out the Christian stuff but but uh, that they didn't edit out and so um, it was it was remarkable um, and so it didn't mean we didn't have trouble and it didn't mean mm -hmm. we didn't have something happen it's just like okay given that that's true Father what do you what do you have to say about this and what do you want me to do as in a response to walking with you um, and I got I got a comment so we did post it up. Uh, and I got some comments and said, yeah, you said you believed in God and you were lucky, uh, didn't happen to you. What would you have done and felt if your house would have got hit by the tornado? Mm. Uh, I said, well, um, I would have been okay with it because I asked him, what do you have to say about this? Right. And his answer could have been, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit your house. Your house is going to get destruction, and I'm telling you, get downstairs into that room mm -hmm. uh, and w get through it, and then later we'll deal with the aftermath. And, and if that's what he would have said, I would have considered that the same response as I'm going to I'm going to protect you, mm -hmm. because had it been destroyed, my my comment would have been, now what? Right. Okay. Now right. it's destroyed. Um, I don't I don't blame you. I don't say how come, why didn't you? Right. It's that. But what about now? That was what. Now what? And he would have said, "Okay, now let me show you what what to do next." Mm -hmm. um, and uh, walking with God isn't. Well, don't you protect me from all the terrible stuff in the world? Right. Rather, given that I'm going to experience it, what do you have to say about it? How are you going to protect me in this scenario? And if mm -hmm. I'm going to be impacted by it, what do you have to say now? Now what? Um, and that's the covenant. And yeah. so we, we expected it. So one of the things that just as you're talking about, I can, I can hear people's questions. Um, and I think one is that people would be struck by how much clarity and precision you had. You had to have complete confidence that what you were hearing was accurate. Right. To stand and pray against that storm when the logical safe place would have been actually to be in the basement with everyone else. Yet you ask God, he gave you an instruction. You stand confidently on that instruction, come what may. Right. Um, I'm not even sure what question to ask there, except that I think that is probably one of the more surprising elements to a lot of people when they hear this story even is that faith. And so maybe even just speak into um, a little bit of how God built that in you. I mean, I know you, you've been learning to ask the questions. That's been a lifelong thing. Um, but maybe just a little bit um, of, a little bit of that journey of, of, hey, you can believe what I said. Yeah, yeah. And, and stand on it regardless. If you can speak to that maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
you know, I'll just try to get to uh, a little bit of a simple overview, but I uh, grew up in a, my dad was a surgeon, uh, very intellectual. I was very intellectual uh, and extremely geared toward logic mm -hmm. and cause and effect um, and uh, intellectual process. And I was, I was gifted and I was good at it. Um, right. and, I, and I learned it. Um, I went to seminary and um, I went through the same thing. I studied the Bible as really mm -hmm. a textbook because mm -hmm. uh, that's really kind of how you're geared at seminary is you got to learn all this stuff about right. it. So it was very intellectual for me um, and I knew it really, really well because I, I, you know, God's given me a, a mind that I could read things and remember it and, and understand it. So you could it. capture the knowledge so I could well. capture, I had knowledge, I had good knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, now the one thing, this is interesting, when I was at seminary, um, and I came into it kind of idealistically because mm -hmm. I was a young believer. Uh, I was in my 20s, uh, a great student uh, already, but um, I was not a mature believer. I was only a couple years as a believer with right. a thought of, you know, I've got to go serve God and be a pastor, and that's that's what I, I got to work for God, and I got to take I got to take care of things for God, you know. So I kind of went into it with that mentality, but uh, I noticed something. Uh, I'm at seminary, and um, there's all kinds of beliefs, and thoughts, and ideas, and and people are living lives that are really messed up, mm. and I said, wait a minute wait a second, if God is who he says he is, mm. then how come all these things are going on? Right. And how come, how come they're not enjoying life? And wait a minute, they're, they have all these different thoughts right. of what is, what isn't, and how can that be? And I thought we're, I thought we're here to learn the truth. And there's gotta be a truth to this, you know? And mm -hmm. so I had a little bit of a, like, wait a minute, Something a little inquisitive it crisis doesn't, of it faith doesn't, there. It doesn't hold up yet, you know. But mm -hmm. you know, and I learned through it, uh, you know. And so I was, I, I continued to be a faithful uh, person that I would be the guy that you would say, "Do you have a quiet time?" Mm -hmm. And my answer was yes. <laughs> right. I read the Bible, and I knew the Bible, and I read it, and mm -hmm. um, uh, I. I did my work, and hey, I checked that box off. I checked that box. Yes, I got it. You know, and um, and so, you know, so now it's, you know, and I was had you know ups and downs and things that worked, things that didn't work, and I wound up ultimately going bankrupt because of stupid things I did, and including not going to unity with my spouse, which is what we talked about <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Um, and through that, um, I was at a a a severe crisis of. It doesn't seem like anything in the Bible is true, mm -hmm. and when I say true, I mean it doesn't seem to apply, right, to what it says your life's supposed to be like. I wasn't experiencing that, and I had just failed miserably. Mm -hmm. And how come? And my question was, how come God let me do that? You know? And, yeah. Um, and through that process, He said, um, "You don't understand life with me at all. Um, hmm. Do you have a heart? You know?" And this is through somebody speaking that to me. Uh, is you don't understand what it means to walk with God. You are doing it in the intellect, in the flesh, and mm -hmm. that's why you're not living the covenant life. Uh, do you have a heart to go? And, of course, my wife said, yes, she does. <laughs> uh, Speaking for you, Rich, you uh, because, do. You know, <laughs> hey, and, and I, because of what happened to me, uh, and it was so painful and so oppressive mm -hmm. that, yeah, you know what, there's something not right. I've got to learn this. Okay, so mm -hmm. then he, he starts taking me through um, uh, John 10, uh, mm -hmm. where it says, my sheep hear my voice. And I, I kept reading that and looking at it, and he explained it to me. Do you understand what that means? Well, you know, I'm supposed to read the Bible. No. He says, God's speaking. Mm. And your role is to listen. And if, you're, if he says, my sheep hear my voice, he's got to give you the ability to listen. Mm -hmm. Do you have an understanding of that? You know, do you want to learn that? Okay, good. So then I, I start processing, um, you know, all the all the verses about uh, don't put your intellect first, receive, process, talk mm -hmm. to God, be in dialogue with God, 
have relationship with God. And so um, I just had a heart to do it, having mm-hmm. had a heart not to do it because I was so intellectual. Right. Um, and I started, <laughs> I started hearing God's voice. Um, and I have some really cool experiences. And, it's, and your first thought is, did I just hear you say something? You know, right. and you know, yes. And did I hear that right? Did I hear that, that right? You know, yes, and yeah. uh, yes, and stay with me. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and what was told to me, and I understood it as I did it, is that they said, think about a little baby, mm-hmm. um, and you you you're in a room and it's six months old, and a parent calls that baby's name. Mm-hmm. The baby turns. Yeah. And I notice you, I pay attention to you, and I'm listening to you. I heard your voice. Mm-hmm. He said, now how does that happen? Well, I'm spending time with them. Spending time and the parent speaking, 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 yeah. speaking. And then all of a sudden it starts to resonate. Mm-hmm. And I recognize it. I got it. And then, right. and then they say, okay, you, Rich, say the same thing. Say that baby's name. Nothing. Right. They don't know your voice at all because there's never had any time around you. So he said, just spend time with them and learn it and practice it and mm-hmm. then believe it and receive it. Um, and so when I did, I, I made this interesting decision. Um, I said, because of what I understood, that God was leading and I'm following. Mm-hmm. And I had children, and I knew what that like. I knew what that what that was like. I said, I'm going to accept and believe everything that I hear is from Him. If I don't get it right, which I'm not gonna, I know I'm not gonna. There's going to be times I'm not gonna. Right. He'll correct me. Hmm. And I'm not going to second good. guess it. And I'm not going to uh, say, I wonder if, and is this me, Satan? You know, just I'm gonna. It's God. And if he's going to correct me, he'll correct You're going me. to trust his correction. And so right. I, I just started receiving that. Okay, so what happens is I start hearing it. Mm-hmm. I start processing it. I start having a dialogue now with the Holy Spirit, God the Father, mm-hmm. God the Son, uh, that I'm in conversation with. Right. And I could ask questions to get answers. He asked me questions, and, and I'd have to answer him. He'd say things. He, I found him always to be very humorous and very funny because of the way I mm-hmm. think and the way I function. And so he uses the same, you know, the same approach, you know, with me. And so, um, as you practice that, and it didn't take long, that, I, you know, what I hear it. Um, right. Now I can talk about anything. So that when, many, many, many years later, when the situation with the tornado comes, it, it wasn't like that's the first time I ever did it. Right. Yeah. Um, it was it was in a lifetime. He grew you. He into grew that. me yes. to where I could say. Um, I can't go pray about this. <laughs> right. Uh, it's happening right now. Mm-hmm. What do you got to say about this? And what do you want me to do? Right. And, and I, I was going to follow. I was going to yeah. follow immediately. I didn't have to. Well, what's the pros and cons? Should I go downstairs? Right. What if? What if? It's just none of that. You heard his voice, and you were ready with a yes. By and see, by that time, um, I've I've lived that life out. Um, mm-hmm. And it wasn't my first experience with it, and right. and so I could trust it when I asked that question. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you got to say, and what do you want me to do? Um, and and even today, you know, it's not like well then, uh, okay, God, I got a business decision. Uh, what do you got to say, and what do you want me to do? He said, well, um, in this scenario. Uh, what I want you to do is to work with your team and go do some ask, seek, and knocking and mm-hmm. walk with me into it and go to unity and let me show you that piece of it. And uh, don't take what happened in that scenario even, which was immediate. Right. Immediate answer. Don't take that and build a system around it. Right. And generically apply it to all. Or Be in relationship. Like yep. You and I will talk. I'll tell you. Nope. Not ready to show you that. Yep. No, I want you to do it this way. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you step by step. Relax. Um, I want you to discover it. Um, I'll tell you what paths to start with. Uh, you'll learn. You'll learn. You'll learn. And what I've learned is really simple. <laughs> it's fantastic. Right. It's beautiful. And there is no pattern to it in any way of any kind. 
and I love and I, that. I get the direct That's part answer. Of the adventure, right? It is, yeah. I get direct answers. A lot of times, it'll get it by somebody saying something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like like you today even mentioned something that hey, you know, with these young couples, um, Rich, you know, I know you've got some material. Maybe you should formalize that a little bit better, mm-hmm. a little bit stronger, and we should put it out for young couples. Well, I didn't say well. I'll go and evaluate that and see, you know, it's like uh, the Holy Spirit says, pay attention. Mm-hmm. Okay, why? Well, because I use Kathy to say something to you. I want you to pay attention. Mm-hmm. And now it's not like, okay, I'm going to go do it. No, no. Pay attention. Right. I'll walk you into it. But what I want you to do, Rich, is spend some energy on this mm. and process this with me and talk to right. Linda and go back and talk to Kathy and... Uh, you've got some material, and how could you strengthen that and make it more formal? Mm-hmm. And um, actually, it won't take a lot, but it could have a big impact. Right. And how did that happen? He said it through you. Right. Uh, That's so, so cool. <laughs> yeah. So so I've learned, don't put me in a box. Mm-hmm. Don't put me in a system. Don't say every time, just give me the punchline, which is, by the way, the way I like it. <laughs> just, right, right. Hey, I'll, I'll follow you. I'll follow you completely. Just tell me the answer. Right. Yeah. You know what, though? <clears throat> Do you find, like, as time goes and the more I have just learned to walk and to ask the questions and whatever, I used to always be a just give me the punchline right, person. Right, right. And I have become the person who now is more excited about the adventure along the way than the punchline. Right. Because he, it, the way he shows up all along the way as we're seeking him is so incredible to yeah. me a lot of times that I, don't, I wouldn't want to miss that and just jump ahead to the answer. Right. That's right. Um, and it's, uh, it's those little simple little, uh, hey, did you see that? You know, like, wow, yeah. wow, look at that. You know, and it's not the final right. answer, but wow, look at that. You know, and, right. and uh, it's encouraging and comforting. And, and so anybody that's, that's working on it is, is uh, one, um, and one of the reasons I was so skeptical of it was that, um, you know, what's called the, uh, the extreme charismatic uh, mm-hmm. went kind of uh, what I call just out of bounds with it to a level of craziness. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm, if that's what it is, right. it doesn't seem that it's very enjoyable. And right. s- I don't know, something isn't right about that, that it's that extreme and you got to be falling down and you got to be doing all this stuff and you're declaring stuff that I could see, wait a minute, you declared something, it wasn't so. Um, right. So I don't know, I, I doubt it. Um, and when God showed me, well, <laughs> because, and, and what he showed me real early was this. He said, you know, you're a student of the Gospels, Rich. Mm-hmm. Look at the relationship between me and the disciples. What was it like? Mm-hmm. Pleasant. It was, it was a discussion. It was challenge. It was, um, hey boys, uh, you know, let me show you something. And they didn't respond. And I, what did I do? Eh, let it go. I, 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 dealt, I dealt with it later. Um, I'm not here to force everything down your throat. Is do you have a heart to hear and you have a, have mm-hmm. a heart to learn? And, and I'll respond. And so when the, he said, yeah, like, for example, when the disciples, you know, they have a, a city that isn't following Christ. Mm-hmm. And the disciples say, do you want us to call down uh, fire and brimstone and destroy it? You know, uh, because they aren't doing what we're supposed to be doing. And God says, oh, for heaven's sakes, boys. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't quite that have that right. You know, let me help you explain a few things. And in your perspective isn't right yet you know and he said so was that strange was that odd was that crazy was that idiot no he said it's beautiful Mm -hmm. the relationship is you're going to walk with me and be in dialogue with me and I love you and I have a heart to share with you but it's going to be a beautiful walk don't you tell me how you want it to be you follow me I'll make it beautiful for you if you Mm -hmm. have a heart to go and I, and I realized, like, oh. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so it's not this weird stuff, no. Um, it's it's a beautiful walk, and everybody can hear it. And I want you, you know, as, as we develop this, he says, now I want you to tell everybody that. Because, because not many people either believe it's possible mm-hmm. or they think it's so strange that why would I have anything to do with that? Right. He said, no, it's different than that. And you, you experience it. I want you to help share other people that truth 
And all, all you can do, Rich, is invite them to that place. Mm-hmm. And if you do, I'll speak to them. They'll learn it, and they'll see how right. beautiful it is too. You know, and so that's that's, awesome. that's what we're committed about. So that's a great a great question of how did I hear um, this is coming against you? You stand against it, and I'm going to protect you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thanks so much yeah. for sharing that. I think that is super encouraging just to for people to hear a little bit about your journey as God grew you through that and yeah. then how it gets to this place of just complete confidence. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm hearing is, but that is something he gently trained you in, really, and you just stayed with him as he apprenticed you into that. Yes, yes. Know? And the requirement still, uh, which is what Linda and I know, is uh, rich <laughs> daily. Yes. you got to deny self. Take up the cross and follow me. And there's no other way. You can't skip it. You right. can't build up credits. You can't. Uh, <laughs> That's you know, so good. That's so good. Say right that. There. Yeah, you can take a break. Yeah, if you do, you've walked away from the kingdom, and I can't. Right. I can't be with you. And right. by the way, you know it because you've lost your peace, your joy, your freedom, right. your worry, your fear. Exactly. And in that, I mean, the the take a break thing. I always find that interesting, as people do sometimes. Oh, I just need a break, or I, on vacation, I take my time off. Right. You know, don't have my time with God, or I don't go to church, or you know, whatever. And I think, man, you're missing what the best part of vacation could be. That's you right. know. <laughs> By not spending that time and just enjoying that company and that refreshment with him. That's right. Yeah. So that's a it's a beautiful thing. We encourage everybody to. It's it's doable, possible. You will exp- you absolutely will experience it. Yeah. Uh, in a way that's unique to you, which is kind of cool. Uh, mm-hmm. The way Linda hears is different. The way I hear, and uh, it's 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 uh, so personal. It's so so beautiful. So we'll we'll keep picking this up, and uh, uh, we're getting uh, you know uh, keep around this aspect of covenant and peace. But hearing his voice is a big mm-hmm. piece of it because then we got to know, know which way to go. Absolutely. Uh, so it's kind of fun. So we'll pick this up again uh, uh, next week. We have guest Friday or guest Thursday tomorrow and end times Friday mm-hmm. coming up. And then great. we'll pick this up again next week. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Thanks for sharing. And thank you for joining us, everyone. Um, as you go today, know that the God who created the universe also speaks to you. Yes. Take time to pull back, to spend with him, to ask questions and to pause and listen for the answers. The dialogue is a joy, as is the journey. Yes. So Amen. enjoy it. Beautiful, beautiful said. We'll see you, see you next, uh, next week on this series. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank guess. you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.